Vanessa the Crafty Gemini and in this video tutorial I'm gonna teach you how to make my duo zipper pouch super quick and easy a great scrap buster and it features two completely separate and lined zippered compartments if you like what you see make sure to click the subscribe button here so you don't miss out on any of my future videos now let's go over the supplies we'll need so we can get right to making our project. To make my duo zipper pouch, you'll need a sewing machine with a zipper foot, three or four different fabrics, batting or fusible fleece, two zippers that are at least nine inches long, we'll have wonder tape, but you can also use pins or clips, and then the basic stuff like something to mark, measure, and cut your fabrics with. For the fabric cuts, you'll need two exterior pieces of your fabric that measure eight and a half inches across by eight inches tall. You'll cut the exact same pieces from your lining fabric, two of those, eight and a half by eight. You'll also need fabric for the front zippered pocket lining. So this little fabric right here, this measures seven and a half inches across by 10 inches tall. And then you'll need two small rectangles of another fabric that measure two inches by three inches. And this is gonna be for the end tabs of our zipper. So the fabric that you wanna feature right here. Here's a tip for those of you working with directional fabrics. The dimensions of our exterior are eight and a half, this way going horizontally in front of us by eight inches tall. So if you're working with directional fabric like these houses, unless you wanna end up with the front of your pouch looking sideways like this, make sure that you're measuring the eight and a half inch dimension so that it reads correctly the way that the fabric should be oriented. So in this case, I would cut eight and a half this way by eight inches tall. Now let's take one of our exterior panels, always orienting it eight and a half going this way. So it's just eight inches tall. I'm gonna fold it in half and then I will turn it. And I know that this is gonna be the bottom of my pouch. We're gonna cut a curve so we add this little decorative element to the finished pouch. So you can draw the curve here or also a small dish or saucer will help you get the same effect. I'm just gonna wing it. I come in flat following the edge of the fabric. I'll start to curve up and then I wanna end flat here too. So you don't wanna trim away too much from this side or this side. We're simply curving the corner portion. Once I do it to one, I'll then use this as a template to repeat to all the remaining pieces, the exterior and the other two lining pieces also. Now we'll take our batting or our fusible fleece and put one of the exterior panels on it and you're gonna trim all the way around. Repeat it to the other exterior piece as well. Next, let's combine the fabric to the batting. If you're working with fusible fleece, just fuse it into place with your iron. If you're working with batting like I am, I like to use a temporary spray adhesive and spray the fabric and smooth it over the batting. Another option is to stitch all the way around the outer edges close to the outside edge and that will combine the two layers as well. Now take one of your exterior panels that you want to be the front of your pouch and we are going to turn it on its side. So along the straight edge, we're gonna fold in half and mark the center. Grab the pocket lining fabric piece and along the seven and a half inch measurement, you're also going to fold it in half and mark. Now turn the exterior panel this way so you see your halfway mark on your left hand side. Take the lining piece with the center mark and flip it so the pretty side of the fabric is face down and match up the centers from here to here. But I also want you to place it not all the way at the top, but one inch down from this edge. So I like to take a ruler, measure from the edge of the fabric. The center is at the center mark. Once they're centered, grab some pins and pin it in place. As you probably figured, we're working on the front zippered pocket here. So grab your ruler, a marking pen, and we need to measure one more inch over on the lining fabric side, and we're gonna draw a line. Now the line needs to measure six inches in length, and of course we want it to be perfectly centered here. So we have a center line here, the center line carries over to here, and half, which would be the center of six inches, is three inches. So we'll use our ruler, and we're gonna put the three inch, here's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the three inch I'll put at the center mark, 
slide it over so we're one inch over from the top edge of that lining fabric okay with the three inch at the center now i know that i can follow on my ruler from zero which is right here to six inches here and draw the line now we measure half of an inch to the right of this first line so i simply put the three back on the center same place slide it over so the line i previously drew is now half of an inch there and do the exact same six inch length line now we'll connect the dots on the ends to make a full box it's pretty easy next we'll head to the sewing machine to stitch on the lines that we just drew pivoting on all the corners and we're stitching through all the layers Next, we're going to cut in the center of this box. If you're new at this, go ahead and make some marks. Draw a dot in the center here about a half of an inch down from that short line. And the same thing on the opposite side here. And you can draw this line or you can freehand cut it. If it's easier for you to see or to cut, just connect those dots. You'll take your rotary cutter and cut right along that line. And then on the ends, you're going to cut a V shape like this, like that. Use some sharp snips. The key is to get all the way to the outermost corner without cutting into your stitches there. But it's very important that it reach all the way. Now with your iron, remove these pins and flip the fabric through the opening to the back side or the batting side of the project. Pull it all the way out. And if you didn't cut far enough in the corners, you'll see that the fabric will want to buckle on you. You see how I can pull that all the way and there's no tightening on the corners? That means I cut all the way far. If it tends to look something like this, more wrinkled in the corners, that means you need to come back here and cut closer to your stitch line. Once the box is done, we'll need to install the zipper. So grab your zipper, slide the pull over so it's somewhat in the middle there. And you're going to place this here to top stitch around. You can use basting glue or pins, but a really helpful tip is to actually use this wonder tape. And this is just a paper backed water soluble tape that doesn't gum up your needle. And I place it where I want it. Then I kind of scratch it with my nail. and go in and peel off the paper. So I'll do that to both long edges. Now we stitch all around the box to secure the zipper in place. flip it over trim away any excess zipper tape now let's stitch up the pocket so we're gonna pull this up here to match the raw edges at the top and to close off the pocket bag you're gonna sew up one side across the top and down the other here obviously we don't need to stitch because it's on the fold now the key thing here is for sewing this you want to make sure you're only sewing the two layers of the actual pocket lining fabric and that you're not catching the batting on the other side. So I don't even place pins. I will just grab it and stitch one chunk of the seam I need to sew at a time. Match up your raw edges and with these fingers I push away the batting and the other fabric. Back stitch at the beginning and ends. I stop in the corner with the needle down so I can lift the presser foot and pivot. And when I come to sew here, remember to move the batting and the exterior fabric out of your way. Repeat the same thing on the opposite corner. Move everything out. The pocket is enclosed 
and the zipper installed. Next, let's prep the zipper that's gonna be for the main closure of our dual zip pouch up here. You want to open it so that the zipper pull is somewhere in the seven and three quarters inches that we're about to cut. So I take my ruler, here's zero, seven and three quarters is right here, and I wanna make sure that the zipper pull is within that measurement because if I cut a chunk like this and there's no zipper pull in this measurement, you won't have a working zipper for now. So let's do from zero, seven and three quarters, I'm gonna cut here first, and then measure over seven and three quarters. Now don't touch that zipper pull so it doesn't come flying off. Set it aside for now, and grab the two zip tab ends that you've chosen to have this kind of decorative finish on the ends of your zipper. Grab your ironing board, and we're gonna prep these two to finish off the zipper ends. We fold these in half first, create a center crease line, open it and bring the outer edges into that center crease line and press that. And then refold it on the initial center crease line to create these kind of double fold little tab ends and repeat to the other. Now we sandwich the zipper ends into the center here, place a clip, and we're gonna stitch close to this edge, making sure to catch the fabric on top, the zipper, and then also the fabric that's underneath. And here's a quick tip, when you're going to insert the zipper end that's already open, do not leave a big gap like this when you're clipping it in here because it's gonna get sewn like that and the zipper won't fully close on this end. So instead, pinch it together with your fingers to simulate like if the zipper is closed there, then insert it and place a clip so it stays like that for sewing. After the tabs are sewn, flip it over, make sure you went through all the layers of fabric, and then trim away any excess flush with the edges of the zipper tape. And now we are ready to sew. So grab your two exterior panels, your two lining pieces, and your prepped zipper, and head over to the sewing machine to install the zipper foot. Now before we sew, take a quick note that the zipper should be shorter than the exterior panel and that's done on purpose so we get nice clean finishes on the end. So make sure that you have it the same distance to this edge and that edge. You should have the zipper foot installed in your sewing machine. Now I want you to take the front exterior panel, one lining piece and the zipper. If you want the zipper to close on the right and open to the left, make sure that you're orienting it however you want it to open and close at this point also. So here I'm gonna put it so they both open from the same side. We're gonna put the zipper on the exterior fabric here with pretty sides touching. So the zipper teeth should be face down. Remember to center the zipper along the top edge so we have about a quarter of an inch to three eighths of an inch of fabric there and the same thing on the opposite side and then I just like to put maybe one or two clips there. Now I'm going to open up my zipper to keep the metal out of place until I get a little bit closer. Then we're going to stitch this side down. Stop with the needle in, lift your presser foot and then you can clear the zipper pull out of your way to continue sewing. Now we'll take the lining piece and we're also going to put it on top of the exterior with pretty sides touching. So that means this pretty side to this pretty side with the zipper sandwiched in between the two. So now match the top straight edge the same place we did before. But this time we're gonna stitch on the same stitch line we just did so everything is even. But if you notice, we're covering our stitches here. So what I do is line it up, grab it, and then flip it over to the other side where you can see your stitch line and use that as your guide to stitch it again. This is what you should have at this point. Now we're gonna do it, same thing to the opposite side to attach it, so grab your other exterior panel your other lining piece, and we need to do the same thing, but sandwich the opposite edge of the zipper tape. So this time, again, it's gonna go pretty side of the zipper to pretty side of this. So we're going like this. 
and again center the zipper on that exterior panel and sew it down. Next we'll attach the last piece of lining and so this one needs to be done pretty sides touching the exterior panel that it belonged to but what happens is you can't really see it because it's underneath so just pretend that this stuff is not here. So if this is the exterior panel that still needs a piece of lining it's pretty side face up. I take this one and put it pretty sides face down and sandwich the zipper tape in between them. Then I'll grab it, fold it and stitch from the line where I can see my stitching. And we're ready to stitch it up. So I want you to grab one exterior panel, make sure you're grabbing the batting with it, the other exterior panel, and these two will be sewn pretty sides touching. So if you flip this this way, you'll see that the lining pieces also end up pretty sides touching. So grab your pins and I'm going to go over how to sew around. You do want to go ahead and leave an opening here on the lining side somewhere. I typically will do it at the bottom down here. I think this will work fine. About three and a half to four inches is a good enough opening to leave. So we won't stitch in this area here. Everywhere else you're going to stitch. When you're on the lining part, I like to do it about 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance when I'm in this range here, because this is my lining fabric, so that it lies a little bit flatter inside of the pouch. When we're working with the exterior, so I'll come in about 3 eighths of an inch from here, here, here. When I get to this part here, we want to make sure that where the fabrics start and stop match up perfectly. So decide which way you want to push the end tab towards and make sure it's consistent on this end and on that end. So I'm going to match up. I'm going to push it towards the side that has the zipper teeth or the exterior side and match these edges here. You can put clips. Once I work my way here, notice we had the zipper tabs smaller okay, then the exterior fabric. And the reason for that is that when you come across here, I don't want you to sew through the zipper tab. Does that make sense? You just want to taper it off so you catch the sewing right here so you're still combining the two, but I don't want you to stitch over this part. So the seam allowance will come right through here. Then you go still with a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around. You'll do the same thing right there. Clear the end of the zipper and then come back to the lining side again, making a little bit larger of a seam allowance. If the lining is smaller than the outside of the bag, it will help the lining lie a little bit flatter. For this, I like to go ahead and put back the regular foot on my presser foot, the universal one. And we'll start at one of the starting points of our lining. Back stitch at the beginning and ends. And here's a tip that I totally forgot. Before you stitch up the exterior part, go ahead and leave uh, the zipper, the main zipper closure, half of it open. It should be somewhere in the middle because if not, you won't be able to reach in there to open the zipper. So make sure that before you start the step, grab your zipper pull and open the zipper pocket at the top at least halfway. Like this. So then you'll be able to flip it out. It's not the end of the world when you forget little steps like that and they're super easy to fix. So just stop, pull out some stitches if you forget to, and then go back and just reinforce the stitch of where you stopped and started so you make sure you don't end up with a hole. And then continue your sewing. Now I take pinking shears to clip my curves just because it's faster. Reduces the seam allowance here, especially in the lining. You can do the same on the exterior side, but if you use the quarter of an inch seam allowance, I find that it's really not even necessary. Then through the opening in our lining, we'll reach in, pull everything out. 
through the zippered pocket. That's why it's important to have it open. I reach in through the lining and push everything out. And on the ends here, grab it and push it. It should come all the way out for a clean finish like this because we don't have to catch the zipper tab ends in our seam allowance. So the whole thing should come out. Same thing on the other side. After giving the pouch a good press, in the lining section where we have our hole, tuck under the raw edges. I like to press it also so it lies flat for me. You can hand stitch this in place. I'm just going to do some really close straight stitches close to the outer edge to seal it up. And then we'll tuck it in and our duo zip pouch will be complete. And there you have it, a cute and functional project that you can whip up in no time at all. Now I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial and that you'll give my project a try. If you do, leave me a comment below and let me know what you plan to use your zip pouch for. They're great for so many different uses, but I'd love to hear your ideas. If you enjoyed it though, give it a thumbs up, share it with some friends on some social media sites. I would love that. And if you want, post pictures on my Facebook page so I can check out what you're making from my tutorials. You can always tag me at Crafty Gemini or use the hashtag Crafty Gemini. Thanks again for watching. I will be back tomorrow with day three of my 12 days of last minute DIY gifts, and I will see you in that next video. Bye.